Hello everyone, my name is Ryan, if you don't know me, and today we're going to be making these easy vertical crochet mittens. Like always, I forgot to film an intro, so I decided to take the time to draw a little mini-me instead, so now you have a little picture of what I think I look like to go along with this audio. I'd say this is probably an advanced beginner project or an intermediate project. This is to go along with my um, classic fisherman cap pattern. It's like the same style of vertical crochet, and I think they really match. So if you want to match and make a set of hat and mittens, this is uh, the pattern for you. And this is going to be a size medium, and I'll have all the sizing down below. So we're going to start with a 3.2 millimeter hook and worsted weight yarn. There's me showing that it is a four which in America is medium weight, whatever that means. And my janky 3.5 millimeter, I still haven't figured out how to make a nice cover for this yet. Uh, so yeah, so now I'm going to chain 47 for 46 stitches. And once you have your 47 chains, we're going to start our first row, which is going to be to slip two. So slip one and slip two. And that's going to be the top of the mitten. And then you're going to do one single crochet. I'm going a little bit slow here, just like as a refresh if you're learning. Um, now we're going to do a half double crochet, so yarn over, pull through all three, and then we're going to double crochet 32, and so I'm not going to stick around for all that, but we're going to double crochet 32, and then for the cuff portion of our mitten, we're going to half double crochet 10, and I'll meet you at the end. And now we're going to do our cuff, which is going to be 10 half double crochet. You can make this cuff longer if you wish. Um, gauge is five double crochets per inch. And so this cuff is two inches long. So if you want to make it three inches, make it 15. Or in the size large, I add three to make it two and a half inches. So just whatever you think is best. Then at the bottom of this cuff, since we did half double crochet, I chained two and then turned. And the entirety of this pattern is gonna be in back loops only, just like my hat patterns to give that nice uh, ribbed look. So we're just gonna go back through everything we just did, but in reverse, and we're gonna do so only in the back loops, which is the back loop of the little V that sits on top of your work. So we're gonna do half double crochet 10, double crochet 32, half double crochet 1, single crochet 1, slip stitch 2, and I'll meet you at the end.
Now that we're at the top of our mitten, I'm showing how I like to stretch it out and I look at the row below to see what stitch I'm on. You can just count everything if you want, just sometimes I do that. So we're gonna do the half double crochet and then our single crochet and then our two slip stitches all in the back loops. And at the top, top of the mitten, we're just gonna chain one and turn for those slip stitches. And so now we're just gonna repeat this, repeat these two rows until you have a total of 19 rows for a size medium. Also, whenever I record, for some reason, I get like really in my head. I don't know why I'm saying mitten. I've never said mitten in my life. It's just a mitten, you know, good old American mitten. I think I have that, um, that meme, purple mittens stuck in my head. If you know, you know, if you don't know, look it up. It's really funny. Um, and yeah, anyway, back to it, 19 rows. And here after a couple rows, you can see the pattern we're working with, the cuff, the middle section, and then the top where it tapers off, sort of Coke bottle-esque, and yeah. And then here up is the 19 rows. It needs to be an odd number so that you end at the bottom cuff area. And so you can fold that in half. Um, don't worry if it looks like sort of the wrong size, your hand isn't gonna fit in there without like the mitten, or sorry, without the thumb. See, that's the, uh, the final, and there is the thumb section, so now we're going to work on the thumb. And for the thumb, we are at the bottom, and we're going to single crochet 14. We're switching to single crochet instead of half double crochet to fit the right wrist measurement. Um, it really doesn't matter, you can't um, really tell, but it just uh, helps with the fit, so just uh, work with it. So we're going to single crochet 14, um, 10 for the cuff, and then 4 extra. And then after that, we're going to half double crochet 4, double crochet 6, and then I will meet you when we get to the thumb. Next, we are going to extend our thumb piece by doing eight foundation double crochets, which is easier than it sounds. You're basically just going to add an extra chain before you do your double crochet, and then you're going to enter the bottom of the double crochet that you just did, these two little loops at the bottom. You're gonna chain up one, and then go through two, go through two, like a normal double crochet and then you're gonna go through the two stitches underneath the double crochet that you just made. Um, you're essentially just like making new double crochets from nothing while adding a chain on the bottom. And we're gonna do eight of those.
Next, we're going to do a foundation single crochet. So you're just going to enter the bottom stitch, chain one, and then pull through two, and then a foundation slip stitch. So you're just going to uh, go through that bottom stitch, pull up a loop, and go through both of them and then turn. So now you should have 10 new stitches for your thumb piece and we'll move on to the next row which is going to be again all in back loops. You're going to slip one, single crochet one, and then double crochet 14 and this is including the eight from the thumb and the six down on the middle of the hand. So yeah, double crochet 14, then half double crochet four and single crochet your 14. And then what I'm calling round two is just the reverse of that, starting at the cuff and then up towards the tip of the thumb. And you're gonna repeat rounds one and two for a total of eight rows, ending at the bottom of the cuff there. And then you have a finished, finished mitten and all we have to do is put it together. And that's where the seam is gonna be. And because we're flipping these inside out, you only need, a for left and right, you only need to make one. So if the thumb is on the left, you're making a right hand mitten. And if the thumb is on the right of the hand, you're making a left handed mitten. So just remember that so you don't accidentally make two of the same one. So I already have a right hand, so I'm gonna make a left hand. So I need my thumb to be on the right side of the mitten. And so now I'm going to show you how to slip stitch these slip stitch this together. So since I'm making a left-handed mitten, the yarn is going to be in the back. It doesn't really change anything. You're just going to slip stitch together one for one, one stitch from one side and one from the other. And you're going to slip stitch 24 stitches, which is going to get you to the bottom of the thumb. And then you're going to slip stitch up the 10 stitches of the thumb, as you'll see here. And then I'll show you how I close the little hole at the top of the thumb.
and then I just chain one when I'm at the bottom of the thumb and I press the thumb pieces together to make sure I'm in the right spot and I find the first stitch of this thumb and then we're just going to do exactly what we did down at the bottom. We're going to slip stitch together 10 stitches until we get the top of the thumb and we're going to chain one, break our yarn and use the end to close the hole. At the top, I chained one, broke my yarn. Now we're gonna pull out the end. You didn't need this much, uh, as much yarn as I left, but it doesn't really matter. So now I'm taking my tapestry needle and I'm threading that. And this is the easiest hole to darn in your life because it's so tiny. Um, so I'm just taking a stitch from the top of like each slip stitch row and we're gonna go around in a circle like a drawstring bag, just picking up one stitch at the very top of this hole. And then once I've gone through all of these stitches, I'm just gonna pull it really tight to make sure there's no gap. And then I will make a knot just to secure it and I will weave in my end. And it's really convenient to weave in ends on this project because I just weave it into the new seam we're creating, into all those slip stitches we just did. That makes it really invisible. Um, so yeah, here I am doing that. I just go back and forth through a line of stitching for like five or six stitches. And then I like to pull it to make sure um, it's in the right spot. I like to stretch it a little bit and then clip my end. And yeah, sewing in ends on crochet is actually really easy. And this is gonna be on the inside, so it really doesn't matter anyway. Now we're essentially going to do the same thing at the top of the mitten, except we need to reattach our yarn. So I just do so in the very corner in the last stitch that we slipped before. I just attach with a slip stitch and then slip stitch up all 22 of those stitches and sold sew the top hole closed exactly how we did the thumb, which I will show.
Sewing the top of this mitten is exactly how we just sewed the thumb hole closed. We're just going to take our length of yarn, thread it on a tapestry needle, and we're going to pick up a stitch from each one of these slip stitch rows. I think it's technically um, every other row from turning, so there's probably um, like eight or nine of these. I didn't count, it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't actually it doesn't really matter what you pick up as long as you're just picking up something at the very top at the end of each one of these rows. And so yeah, I'm just going through all these little slip stitches at the top, just like a drawstring bag. And then I went when I get to the top, I'm gonna pull it really tight, make a knot, and sew in my end just like on the thumb. The only difference here is because it's a little bit bigger, I went back through the same stitches that we just went around one more time like I do on my hats. Um, I just like doing that to make it a little bit more secure just because it's a bigger hole than like the tiny little hole in the thumb and I really don't want this to ever come undone. So I just go around one extra time just for security and then I make a knot and sew in my ends. This pattern is very much not futzy. Um, there's not much else to do. I'm just gonna sew in this thread that I left at the corner here. Sometimes there's like a gap in this corner from where you attached. I didn't really have one, but I showed you how you would do it. Just picking up a couple stitches from the corner on each side and then sewing in that end. And then I sewed in the end at the bottom of the cuff and you're basically done after that. You just flip it right side out and then I show you how I like to roll my seams a little bit just so that it's like more invisible. It's not very visible because of the ribbed pattern but I just want to hide that seam a little bit more so I like rolling it between my fingers just to flatten it out a little bit.
like I said, the seam is actually pretty well hidden because of the ribbing pattern. So if you just really can't be bothered to make a left and a right, you could just make one or two lefts or two rights and no one will really know. So there's my right, there's my left, and here I'm putting them on. I wear a size medium. This is a size medium. They're a little bit uh, roomy, but that's kind of the point. They're like winter mittens. And yeah, I really like them and I hope you make them. Um, for other sizing, you can check out the pattern on my Etsy or on my Patreon. Um, that'll be down below. And yeah, watch my uh, tomfoolery. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this pattern and try making it. I think it really matches my fisherman's cap pattern and so it makes me really happy. Um, like I said, this is a size medium, but if you want other sizing for large, small, and how I would modify for kids, you can check out my pattern on Etsy or on my Patreon page. Bye!